Let's turn this slide into this one. Let's go, let's make it happen. I'm using PowerPoint 365. And now let's start with this empty slide. First let's find a picture that we can use as a slide background for this slide. And to save some time I've downloaded some photos from unsplash.com that we can use. So let's just select this beautiful black dune photo and let's copy it. And now, we can apply it as a picture background for our slide. And choose clipboard to paste the black dune photo. Well done bro, looking super awesome. And next let's insert a bunch of rectangles. This will help us to create a nice slide layout. And first of all let's create a rectangle that has a height of 1.5 cm. Let's align it to the top and stretch to the full slide width. Now let's copy it and align the second rectangle to the bottom. We can as well activate the slide guides to help us out with the alignment. And now make one more rectangle copy, move it just below the slide center and resize it as I do. Pro tip, you can hold down control and shift keys to create copies and drag them in a straight line. Now select all of the rectangles in the middle of the slide, group them, and stretch them to the full slide width. After that, we can ungroup them. And we can turn off the slide guides for now as well. Alright, and now the slide layout is ready, it will be much easier to precisely add text and photos. Now let me grab some text from my previous slide, and let's paste it into our slide. And these are just two text boxes grouped into a group, let's copy them. Hit Ctrl V to paste, and let's align this text group inside this bottom left rectangle. And now let's duplicate this text group, a few more times. Feel free to adjust the text as needed. And now let me quickly copy this logo and footer as well. Awesome, and now let's select the footer, topic 2 and topic 3 text boxes, and let's reduce their brightness. And we can do that, by going into the text fill options, and adding some text transparency, I'm using 70%. That's great, and now let's insert a picture into this top left rectangle. Let me copy this awesome photo, and let's paste it into our slide. And now let's send this photo to back, so that we can see all of the rectangles. And next make sure you select the photo first, then hold down the shift key, select the top left rectangle, and then go to merge shapes, and choose intersect. In Skadoosh, we have placed a picture inside the rectangle, and you can always select your picture, go to the crop tool, and adjust how your picture looks like. And next my curious friend, let's do a couple of adjustments for this photo. Let's go to the picture correction options, and first let's add some contrast, for example 20%. Next let's make this photo black and white, by setting the saturation to 0%. Super nice, we have a new look. And now, to speed things up, we can remove these two rectangles. And let's just duplicate our black and white photo two times. And now, let's find some new pictures. Let's copy this awesome photo, and let's get back to our slide and select the photo in the center. Let's right-click on it, choose Change Picture, and pick from Clipboard. And this way, we have easily replaced the picture, and next let's apply the same image adjustments as we did before. Additionally, let's add some image transparency, I'm using 70%. 
And now let's replace and adjust the last image. Super nice, you are making a wonderful progress. And next let's recolor this photo, so that it stands out better. Let's go to picture format, color, choose more variations, and pick any custom color that you wish. Super nice, and by the way here is the hex code, if you would like to use the same color as well. And next let's draw a spiky line, here at the bottom of the slide, just to add some visual interest. Let's go to Insert, Shapes, and pick the Freeform tool. And now just click a couple of times to draw your spiky line. And to save some time, let's just copy the look of this line by using the Format Painter. That's nice, and you can always adjust the height or points of your line if needed. That's great, and next let's jump into the selection pane, where we can see the list of all of the elements that exist on the slide. And as you can see, our spiky line is called Freeform Shape 27. And now, let's hide all of the elements, except the spiky line. We'll have to make a screenshot of our slide. Let's play the presentation from the current slide, and let's hit print screen to make a screenshot. Alright. And now let's hit Ctrl V to paste the screenshot, and as you can see we definitely have a screenshot on top. And next, let's add a couple of picture effects to it. First, let's add a maximum blur effect to the screenshot picture. And let's increase the picture brightness by 30%. And next, let's make sure that our spiky line stays on top. Let's just bring it to front. And let's make sure that the blurred screenshot sits in the center of the slide. And next, my friends, let's make one more screenshot. We can now delete the first screenshot and paste in the new one. As you can see, the new screenshot has our spiky line and the blur effect, this is what we need. And now, we can reduce the width of our original spiky line. And let's just grab the style from this thin line, and let's apply it to our line. That's nice. And now let's align the screenshot to the center of the slide. and let's crop it, so that only the bottom left corner is visible. Now as you can see, we have this little blurred crop picture, that we will use to create an animated glassmorphic effect. In the selection pane, we can rename it to blurred picture, and we can rename our thin spiky line as well. And now let's just hit the show all button so that we can see all of the slide elements again, and let's move the blurred picture and spiky line to the bottom of the list. Super awesome! Now let's select the blurred picture, go to the crop tool, and adjust the cropping area as I do. And by the way, I forgot to tell you, that I've already deleted all of the rectangles that we have created in the beginning of this tutorial. We don't need them anymore, since the slide design is ready. And now, let's do something super fun. Let's make all of these photos clickable, by inserting hyperlinks. So let's make sure, that this first photo is linked to slide number 11. And now let's just duplicate slide number 11 two times, so that we have more slides to work with. Let's get back to slide number 11 and let's link the middle photo to slide number 12, and the photo on the right, to slide number 13. And now, since all of the photos on slide number 11 have links, let's copy them, and paste them into slides 12 and 13.
And now, once we hover over the pictures, we can definitely see that all of them have links, that's awesome. And now the last step is to change the active photo on slide number 12 and slide number 13. Now on the slide number 12, select the blurred picture and let's use the crop tool to update the cropping area. And let's make sure that we update the text style in the active photo. And let's just select this photo on the left. Let's activate the crop tool, and let's choose the fill option. This way the photo will zoom back, because previously, I have zoomed it in. And now for this photo in the middle, we can do the opposite. Let's activate the crop tool, and increase the photo size. Later on we will apply a morph transition to all of the slides, and this way create a photo zoom animation. And now let me quickly update the active photo on the last slide. Alright, all of the slides are ready, let's make sure that we select them all, and now let's go to slide transitions, and choose morph, and for the transition duration I'm using 1.5 seconds. Okay, everything is ready, let's check it out on the full screen. That's super awesome, everything seems to be working just fine. Congratulations, now you know, how you can design and animate this kind of slide with clickable photos and a glass morphic look. If you have enjoyed this video, please watch more videos on my channel, there is so much more awesome things to learn. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.